guys, it's Cheyenne. Welcome back to my channel. And today I wanted to talk to you guys about the exams that you will be taking to qualify yourself as a dental assistant. Now I live in Oregon, so your qualifications may be different in other states. I know that Washington, you only need to have your radiology. I know that California is different. Texas is a little bit different. So I know all states are different, but if you go on to danby.com, you can actually see what the qualifications are in your state. So this will just be about Oregon, but I wanted to talk about um, some websites that I found useful, ask my exams, and just some study things and things like that. So let's get started. First exam that I ever took in school was the ICE exam. Now the ICE exam is infection control. You actually do not need to have this to have um, your dental assisting license, but the program that I went through they made us take this, <laughs> which infection control is a major part of dental assisting and it is good information to know. It will definitely help you to take the course. Um, I found this exam or test to be really easy to take. It basically is just talking about bloodborne pathogens, diseases, you know, hand washing, why that's important, sharps containers and disposing of things properly. I thought the exam was pretty simple and pretty much common sense of what you should do or how you should dispose of things. Now in school, this is the book that I had. It is Modern Dental Assisting. Um, this basically was all I needed all through school. It of course is a huge book. It has tons of information in it. I use this to practice for all of my exams that I took. And if I wasn't using that book, I was on the internet. Now. I didn't pay for any extra courses on the internet. I didn't think that I needed to. A lot of websites that I use were like Quizlet. Um, there's one called like test.com. If you just Google the exam that you need to take, like ICE exam for dental assisting or radiology, um, practice questions, things like that, certain things will pop up. I did not feel the need that I needed to purchase practice test. I think it's kind of a waste of money. There's tons of information on the internet for free that can help you practice and you don't need to be spending a bunch of extra money because the tests alone are very expensive and you're already paying to get through school. The last thing you need is to spend $100 on a practice test, you know? I just didn't think it was worth it. Um, Quizlet is something that I use all the time for all of my exams and I absolutely loved it. There's practice questions on there. Um, they have like matching, you know, definitions to words. I just found it extremely helpful. Um, but anyways, ICE, ICE exam, super easy to take. And then the next exam that we took was radiology. Now radiology is what you take so you can take x-rays. <laughs> and there is a test that you take so that you're certified for the state. But then also through your course, you have to send in, you know, a perfect set of films, which a full set of films is 18 films. Um, so you'll do that with your instructor. Usually they have you do a few practice ones and then they will help you choose which one they think will help you pass and you send those in. Um, the radiology test to me was one of the hardest tests to pass because you're already stressed about getting good films in and they can be very picky. There are certain guidelines that you have to follow to take a perfect set of films. Um, you have to have open contacts, your teeth can't be overlapping. There's like lengthening teeth and making them, you know, shorter and things like that, things that you have to be paying attention to. So you're already stressed out about that. And then you mail those in, see if they approve them or not. And then you take your test. And the test also was hard. I thought it was one of the hardest tests to take. And Honestly, I honestly did not pass it the first time and that's completely okay. If you do not pass a test the first time, do not get discouraged. It happens to everybody. Um, just study again and retake it. Um, I passed my films, but I did not pass the test the first time. And the reason I did not pass the test the first time is because I didn't know that they would ask so many questions about what the setting should be. When I was in school, you know, about six years ago, the dental assisting field was switching from film to digital and film is completely different than digital of course um film you don't need to be doing a lot of settings and things like that and with digital you have to set your machine to certain settings which honestly as a dental assistant now we never change the settings on our radiology machine or our radiograph machine but 
they wanted to make sure that you knew the correct settings. And I didn't know any of that stuff. I didn't study it. I didn't pay attention to it. I was so focused on how to take x-rays properly that I just completely spaced that. So definitely, definitely study that. Study what, you know, the settings need to be on the machine. Also, they will ask a lot of questions about things that make a bad x-ray, um, like cone cuts, things like that. Um, what makes a good x-ray, which teeth need to be in certain um, x-rays. So, you know, your posterior bite wing, you need to make sure you have, you know, those three molars. And then the bite wing you take in front of that, you need to make sure you have the distal part of the canine in that. So questions like that. Um, so make sure you study all those. And then once you pass that, you're actually able to take x-rays. Now the next test you will take is your, an organ, is your organ basic. And this is a test that you have to take before you get your EFTA. So you have to pass your organ basic, which I thought this test was extremely easy. It's basically, it's a basic test, basic knowledge dental assisting. So it's like tooth numbering, um, you know, surfaces of teeth, things like that. Some materials are thrown in there. So they talk about composite, amalgam, very basic um, and pretty easy to pass. But you actually have to pass that in Oregon to get your EFTA. So your EFTA is a little bit different also. So your EFTA is a test that you take and you have to pass, but you also have to complete a checkoff list within the office that you're doing a practicum site in, or maybe you're possibly working in. You have to do a checkoff list. You have to do temporary crowns, um, polishing amalgam, fillings, composite fillings, bleaching, things like that. And you actually have to sign and date it and have your dentist sign off on it that you've completed so many of these things, um, proof that you know and can do these things properly. So back to the EFTA test. The EFTA test, again, was a hard one, I thought. Um, it had a lot of questions, a lot of questions about materials. You really want to make sure you know all your materials, your cements, um, how long they take the setup. A lot about impressions was in there, a lot about temporary crowns. Again, this book, there's so many sections in here. There is all that in this book. Um, and then also, again, online, look up things, practice. I'm not somebody that likes to practice in groups. I kind of like studying one-on-one, -on -one, just by myself, one-on-one, -on -one. <laughs> just by myself because I feel like I can absorb more and learn more. When I'm in a group setting, I can't really focus. I feel like I'm tending to like talk to everybody. And so I definitely am a, you know, I like to study by myself and just practice by myself, but everyone's different. Um, but yeah, a lot of stuff like that in your EFTA. And then of course your checkoff list. But once you pass that, that is basically... All the certifications you have to have actually you don't even you don't have to have your EFTA to be a dental assistant but if you want to be more valuable in the dental office it is great to have because you can do more things you can help your dentist out more um, you know you can do the temporary crowns things like that and impressions so they like you to have that um, but once you have that you're awesome you're gravy good to go that is all that you know they really expect of you now I, when I got into dental assisting, I just wanted to keep going. I wanted to get more raises and more money because I'm greedy, I like my money. So that's what I chose to do. But after my EFTA, I then went and got my soft reline certification. So the soft reline is a little bit different. You don't have to take a test through Danby um, to be certified to do soft relines. You actually have to do, print off a checkoff sheet off of Danby, um, go over with your dentist. They mark that you have done soft reline so much, and then you mail that in, and then they then certify you that you can do soft relines. Same thing with sealants. You do so many sealants, your dentist signs off on it, you mail it in, and then you're certified to do sealants. Um, and then I went a step further and then got my instructor permits. So now I can actually certify other dental assistants and make them sealant and soft reline certified. And the way I did that was I contacted Oregon Board of Dentistry. I had to put together um, some education learning material because I had to make a test and a PowerPoint, show them what I was gonna be doing to teach these girls how to do soft reline and sealants. And then I presented that in front of the Oregon Board of Dentistry and then they certified me as an instructor. So now I'm able to teach my course 
And then um, I will give the girls our certificate saying that they are, you know, they can do soft relines and sealants. So that's awesome. Um, and then I took it a step further in Oregon. We're not certified dental assistants. I don't have my CDA. So that is another <laughs> exam you can take. So I went through DMB, signed up to do my CDA. Now, the difference between CDA and EFTA is EFTA, I am an Oregon dental assistant. Now that I'm a certified dental assistant, I have my CDA. I can move to other states and it's easier for me to transfer my licenses because I am nationally certified. I'm not just certified in Oregon. So it makes it easier for me if I ever decide to move or relocate because my husband and I were talking about moving to Texas a couple years ago. And with just my normal licensing, I would have had to live in Texas for two years without a license to even be eligible to take a test to be certified. Like it was just crazy. So I got my CDA just to make that easier if we ever were to relocate. Now the CDA test I thought was so hard. I don't know it's because I hadn't taken a test in so long because I've been out of school for so long, but it was tough, but I passed it, which I was blown away. I really thought I was going to fail it. But again, I used my book and I just use Quizlet and things like that to practice for it. And, you know, Quizlet is really good with tests. They, a lot of questions that I see on Quizlet, I've seen on my exams. So I 100% recommend that. I don't recommend purchasing practice tests and this and that. I just don't find them to be helpful. And I find them to be, you know, there's so many free resources out there, especially YouTube. Like YouTube wasn't a thing really when I was in school, but there's so many things that help you practice that you don't need to spend money on. But yeah, so that is all the certifications that I have and how I achieve them. I hope this video was helpful for you guys. And if you have any other questions, just let me know in the comments down below and I will try to answer them. And if you're taking any tests, good luck. Do not stress about it. If you don't pass, it is okay. You always can retake them. It is very common for people to not pass on the first time. These are really hard tests. And, you know, just practice and try again. And I hope you guys all have a great day and I'll see you in the next video. Bye. One more time's in my king count. They come running when they hear the sound, yeah